with Hillsong College, um, wherever you're at, like I hope that you are experiencing God's presence and, and just being made more aware of him in the midst of this isolation and everything um, and hopefully finding like a really good routine so far um, that doesn't make you feel like your house is a prison of <laughs> loneliness or anything like that. Um, before we get started, I wanted to bring a scripture and I sent this to I sent this to a friend of mine who had experienced a, a very significant loss. And I think in this season, like there's there's so much loss happening. Um, loss of jobs, loss of finances, loss of security, um, sometimes loss of patience for your spouse um, because you guys have spent so much time together recently. Um, and maybe on on the real side of things, you've you've lost family members. Um, don't get so familiar with the fact that this pandemic is happening that the people who have lost their lives are just numbers. Um, they are people and they had brothers and they had sisters and, and there are some people who are watching this where you have brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, um, mom and dad even, um, whose lives were lost in the midst of all this. <clears throat> and so a friend of mine who had experienced a loss, I sent them this scripture. It's from Psalm 71 and I want to read it to you guys. It says, your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. And I love that because it doesn't deny the fact that Lost has loss has been seen, and it doesn't deny um, the fact that you know there is tragedy around. But it does say that He will restore, and He He will lift up, and He will honor. And I think that as we continue to focus on God, as we continue to praise His name, um, we can experience restoration here and now, not not just something that's off in the distant future, like when this is over. Um, or when, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel or anything like that, he is the light in the tunnel. Yeah. And we could experience restoration here and now in your house, in your life, a restoration of peace, a restoration of hope, of joy, a restoration of just a awareness of the spirit. And so that's the, that's the word over this entire session, restoration. And believing that it's here and now, it's also coming. But don't forget that it's also here and now, in Jesus' name. Um, this next song that we're doing is titled Before Me, and it was written, it's an original song written by uh, the college songwriters here, and it was written by Hannah, uh, Bianca, and Hildegun, who's back here on keys. And it just talks about God's presence and him being with you in the thick of it and taking you all the way through. And we think that it's a really timely song and pray that it blesses you guys as we worship. me 
So 
He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. For this stand before the throne. Sing, he shall come. He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found. This Lord dressed in his righteousness alone. For the stand before the throne. Christ alone. God, that you are a cornerstone, you're a firm foundation that we could stand on um, through anything, through the highs, through the lows. God, we thank you for your sovereignty through it all. We give. 
There's a grace when the heart is on fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be dead beneath the waters mm -hmm. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning In the way I will bow to the things of this world No I know I will never be the name but the name that is Jesus you was and still is and will be through it all so come on make the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning I know
space between west and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls gave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be there'll be another in the fire standing next to me be another in the water Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be a sip of this here water because that song was wild. <laughs> um, before we do this next song, um, and I swear what I'm about to say is not like a degree plug, um, but <laughs> I, was, I was doing um, my uh, paper on Isaiah and it was talking about um, just the the themes that are throughout um, mainly Isaiah 40 through 55 and uh, one of the themes is the servant and we obviously understand the servant because uh, the suffering servant and, and like scripture has alluded to that and, and mainly like the synoptics like they've led us to that um, <clears throat> but as I was like doing the study and everything, one of the things that caught my attention is uh, not necessarily like the suffering servant. Cause I think, I think we at least <laughs> get like the iceberg of the suffering servant, but um, the fact that the servant did suffer not only to um, bring about like restoration and, and reconciliation for sins and everything, but um, also to restore servanthood onto the people because the people themselves couldn't be obedient servants without the suffering servant. And so all of that nonsense that I just rambled about to say um, that, like, I guess don't forget that he actually suffered so that way you can be, you can be the servant now. You can serve where you're at. You can ask God, like, how do you want me to be used during this time? How do you want to use me during this time to be obedient? Um, because in that obedience, we're made more like him. In that obedience, we actually see uh, just the future glory of his kingdom come, of his will be done, of seeing things restored left, right, and center. And, um, yeah, I think when we sing this next song, it talks about, it's from Elevation, and it talks about just being available and being open and willing and obedient in that, no matter what the road looks like. And so I pray that as we sing this together, that, and as this becomes like your prayer in this season, 
of being available to God, of being available to serve him and to serve your community and to serve your family and your housemates and your friends, um, that you'll start to see things being restored in your house. Amen. See you. I was going to leave this one. a sacrifice Oh, use me how you want to, God Have your throne within my heart I hear you
Can I say something before we start the next one? 100%. All right. Well, this song that we just sang, I think it reminds us of Samuel, the way he responded to God when he called him. Yeah. And I'm not going to talk about that story, but I'm going to talk about a story that is in 1 Samuel. Love it. And it's on chapter 4. 4. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> chapter that. Has, <laughs> and it's really interesting that Israelites are fighting against the Philistines. And... One day, they had the idea to bring the Ark of the Covenant with them to the battle so that they may have better results. And they did that. And I'm going to read from verse 16. So this messenger came back from the battle to tell Eli, which was the priest at that time, how the battle had gone. And on verse 16, it says, He told Eli, I have just come from the battle line. I fled from it this very day and Eli asked what happened my son the men who brought the news replied Israel fled before the Philistines and the army has suffered heavy losses also your two sons Hophni and Phinehas are dead and the ark of God has been kept captured when he mentioned that the ark of God when he mentioned the ark of God Eli fell backward off his chair by the side of the gate his neck was broken and he died for he was an old man and he was heavy, whatever, and it goes on. But what really interrogates me is that he died after he received the message that the ark was stolen. And I think about our situation right now and how we're like, like he lost his sons too. Yeah. But what's really interesting is that it mentioned that he fell when he heard about the ark. And I know we're losing a lot of things, as you said before, mm. jobs and all, of, and a lot of other things. Yeah. But we haven't lost the presence. Come on. <laughs> so like, there's no, there's no why to like, dying kind of, yeah. because we still have the presence. And I think that in this season, God is reminding us like, hey, my presence is with you. Like, yeah. why are you, why are you deciding to give up if yeah. I'm still there? You know. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting to value the presence of the Holy Spirit because he's here. He hasn't departed from us. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's live as if he was here because he is here. Yeah. And he's not going to depart. So. That is so good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> like, no, like, I knew that you were going to say something cool. I'm saying it. Yeah. 
Um, can so we're gonna go into none but Jesus. Can you pray before we yeah. do that? Um, and just praying that because yes, that that is that is a fundamental truth that we haven't lost His presence. Um, but there may be some people, and maybe you're watching, and you might feel that you actually have, and that um, no matter how hard you've been, you've been trying to to search for Him and and, and pray and, and tune into like every worship session that is possible you are still searching and, and still don't think that he's there um can you pray like to yeah. that end that people would mm-hmm. experience him um not just in like the grandeur of things but also in the in the day-to-day mm-hmm. cool god we thank you so much for your presence we thank you that you're real and i pray for each and every person who's watching this i pray that your presence will just fill the place where they are right now and fill them, I pray that they will understand that you are in their hearts and that you now inhabit in us, God. As you have promised that you bring the Holy Spirit, you did, and it's now here with us, in us. So I pray that we'll have the awareness to understand that you are with us, God, and I pray that for every person that may feel that they don't have you, they don't feel you, they... I don't know what's going on with them, but I pray that they will know that you are with them. Yeah. They will feel that you are with them, and they'll feel it right now. Yes. Holy Spirit, just come and visit us. Yes. I pray that you guide us in everything we do. I pray that in every simple thing of our daily lives, yeah. we'll see you. I pray that in the sunrise, we'll see you. Mm. I pray that in the sunset, we'll see you. Yes. I pray that in the trees, we'll see you. I pray that we'll see you in each other. I pray that we will be aware enough to know that you are real and that you are here with us and in us, God. I pray that your presence will never leave us. And I pray that we will understand that our heart, our minds, our soul. And I pray that every doubt that may come will just go away because we have the conviction that you are real and that you are with us. Yes, sir. And I pray that you restore this conviction in everyone's lives right now. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you because we are able to experience your presence. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. In the quiet, in the stillness, I know that you are God. In the secret of your presence, you know where I am restored. When you call, I won't refuse. Each new day again, I'll choose. There is no one else for me, none but Jesus, crucified to set me free. Now I live to bring him praise in the chaos. In confusion, I know you're sovereign still. In the moment of my weakness, you give me strength to do your will. So when you call, I won't delay.
Strangers, neighbors, God is one. 
children, generations of every nation. Kingdom come. Don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. Madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. some praise, get crazy a little bit. Come on. Yeah. 
Thanks for joining us in worship, guys. We'll see you next week. Keep praying. Keep believing. Restoration is here and now. In Jesus' name, amen.